Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some very effective strategies to win in BTD Battles 2. Now keep in mind, I'm in BFB Coliseum with no VIP. The fact that I've made it here using these strategies is quite astounding. Wait, what's that? They patched some bugs and fixed two of the most broken towers in the entire game making this video irrelevant? Mm -hmm. And season 2 already started? Mm -hmm. I don't care, I'm still gonna make this video. No, shut up! Shut the hell up! Shut up! Go back in the cage! Yeah! Piss off! Sorry about that, let's get back to the monkey video. The first strategy we'll be going over is Dartling Ninja. Now this strategy at the moment is quite popular. Sorry, was quite popular. But unfortunately for me, I don't have any upgrades for the ninja, so I don't regularly use the strategy. And it's also a scummy strat to use, and I still have some dignity left in me. Not much, but something. Your hero's third tower can be anything. Most people go with Oban as their hero, and a boomer or sniper for their third tower. Personally, I go with sniper since I don't have any XP for boomer, and for being real, I don't have any XP. I have one tier 5. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? For the early game, you start with a dartling gun, and by round 11, you should have a hide rocket since I can beat a majority of rushes until Moabs. Remember our third tower? I don't. I said you could go with a boomer or a sniper. I go with sniper because I don't have boomer XP, and sniper is very good late game with a supply drop ability at main Moab. But the problem is, I don't have main Moab. God damn it. Why do I have nothing? Fuck! But I don't think that should be a problem since this game probably won't go too late. And also, I don't have main Moab because... Well, I'm, I'm poor. And I spent all of my XP on supply drops, so we're gonna spam a few for money since they do make more than Eco at the moment. And it looks like our opponent is taking part in the supply drop strategy. If we send a ZoomG at him, he might have to buy something to defend it. That's a good strat, pressuring your opponent to waste money on defense instead of buying more snipers. Unfortunately, he defends our rush with ease by utilizing the spike storm ability, but at least we made him buy something, and that's all that matters. One ZoomG might have failed, so let's try the exact same thing again and hope it works. Did I end up the definition? Of insanity. And it looks like he's rushing us with a fortified zoom G, but we should be fine by using sticky bu- Wait. I don't have that. I don't have a main Moab. The only good Moab damage I have is Rocket Storm and Deadly Precision. I mean, I do have a Plasma Accelerator, but the only real Darling Pass is the middle path. Oh god, I'm not gonna use this strat ever again. Oh wait, I won? I mean, see, I'm telling you, this strategy is so effective. The but wait, you the did point. use Ninja, only Snipers and Dartling. Shut up! You're wrong! I did use Ninja, he was right there! His name is Carl! Please refer to Carl as Carl from now on! Our next strategy is quite similar to the previous one, and our last opponent was actually using it! It's Dartling's Factory! Now again, your hero and third tower are up to you, and still, I go with Open and Sniper! This is actually my main strategy for many reasons! For one, the Spike Sword ability deals quite a good amount of damage to Moab class balloons! And also, to my knowledge, Spactory is not a glitch tower! Which means when the next update comes out, Spactory will probably remain the same! Which is in stark comparison to the Ninja Monkey, who is probably glitched! Maybe, I don't know, because last time I checked, Master Bomber shouldn't be able to pop a fortified bat with some shinobis. So once the Ninja Monkey gets fixed, Spactory could become a new meta tower. I mean, Super Monkey is a thing, but... Balls are cool! <laughs> Can't believe I said that one out loud. That's besides the point. This strategy is the same one as last time, but with Spactories. And since this is the same strategy, you know what that means. Sniper farming! Yeah! I love this game! Now that round 30 is hit, we must send bads at our opponent to win. You see, guys, I sent all my bads about 4 milliseconds before our opponent, which means we should win easily. Oh god, this is close. Please, please. Yes! Yes! Eat my ass! Our next strategy is a little unorthodox, but bear with me. It's doxing your opponent. To pull off this strategy, you must create a YouTube channel before you even enter a game. Trust me, it'll come in handy later. Now when you enter a game, you must dox your opponent, find their address, full legal name, social security number, visa, and the middle school they went to. How do you dox people, you might ask? Just look it up. I recommend using the Onion Router for the best results. Just don't click on the Human Trafficking or Hitman for Hire websites. Although you could use them! Nah, it's just not as funny as ruining someone's life solely by leaking all their personal data, then making them think. If only I had used NordVPN! This newly gained knowledge will soon come into play once you lose the game. Now you might ask, losing is the best strategy for winning? And the answer to that is yes! Lose a few games on purpose, then dox the people you lost to. Then use that handy YouTube channel that I forgot about to publish their personal details online. And make it clear that you only dox people who beat you in BTD Battles 2. Is it legal? No. Do I care? No. If you don't want to go to jail for doxing, I recommend you operate outside of every single country's jurisdiction. 
Yeah, flee your country. I don't care if you have a family. Bao's 2 is more important than your son, Tim. Besides, he was born to become a dream stan anyway. It doesn't even matter anymore. If you want, you could also upload other videos to the channel to help you grow in the Balloons community. Once you have grown a good following after making bad videos and leaking some 14-year-old's IP, this should give your name a sense of fear surrounding you when other players see you in-game. They know that if they win, a lot of people will know exactly how their birth certificate looks when they don't even know if it actually exists or not. So to prevent this, all they have to do is lose to you, and it does work when you're big enough. See? This guy didn't even try to win. It's just that easy. Now, another unexpectedly good strategy also follows the same basis as our previous strategy. That being, you'll need to start a YouTube channel and you'll need access to the dark web. But this strategy is much more effective. All you have to do is go into a game, immediately dock the person you're playing against, make sure you memorize the address, then play the game. If you win, nothing happens. But if you lose, this is where the dark web access comes into play. You are going to hack into a nuclear missile silo and launch an intercontinental ballistic missile at their house. And make sure you record it to get on that YouTube grind! What the hell am I doing? How do you hack nuclear missile silos, you might ask? Just look it up, god damn it! If you ask me this one more time, I swear to god, I'm gonna beat your ass since your dad was in the home to do it! Now, since you're committing the petty crime of launching nuclear warheads at innocent civilians, you might actually get on the news. This is great for you. Instead of only being known by the balloons community, you'll be known by the whole entire world. You'll be known as the man who nukes random people for no goddamn reason to the world. But on the cesspool that is the internet, you'll be known as the if you beat me in a game, I will nuke you guy. Now, whenever you enter any game, Battles 2, Hypixel Bridge, goddamn Scriblio, you will immediately win because your opponent knows damn well if they win, they're about to cause significant damage to their city and the atmosphere. Those were some good strategies, right? What do you mean, no? Okay, then fine. I'll tell you about a strategy that is stronger than ninjas and ruining people's lives. The strategy is... Don't play BTD Battles 2. I'm serious, just don't play it. This game is literally a public toilet because no matter if you love it or hate it, you have probably taken a shit in it at least once. And yes, people shit in BTD Battles 2. There are so many holes in the game's code that the feces coming from people complaining are going through those holes and into the game. It's not good, trust me. Don't play Battles 2. Save yourself the suffering and play a good video game. Like a smaller game made by the same people as BTD Battles 2. It's called BTD 6.